think we're as live with the live stream as we're going to get, so let's go ahead and kick, it, kick this off. I, I proposed a session on notifications, uh, filtering and, and, and prioritizing and postponing, uh, inspired by Amber's talk this, uh, this morning on, on sort of calm computing. And the, the basic premise is that, that no matter what situation we're in, there are probably some notifications that we would like to know about. Um, even if you're like uh, out in, you like flew to Thailand to go like uh, sit in a hut to go right by yourself and not be, uh, you know, be away from all technology. Uh, if there was a tsunami coming, you probably would want to be notified, for example. Um, so there, there are, like, no matter how isolated you want to be, there are probably some examples of notifications you want to receive. But the question is, how, how do we uh, figure out what those are, and then how do we build tools that sort of adapt to users and or help empower users to tweak that without giving them the here are a hundred checkboxes. Please navigate and check them all and uncheck them all whenever anything changes in your life, according to uh, your your uh, like interruptibility. So, is it notifications or is it interruptions? Um, I I guess I see notifications as one form of interruption. Right. So that's does that answer your question? So one of the things that I've played with a bit over the past couple of years is some of the apps that are designed to give us um, emergency notifications. So to tell you, for example, whether there's a tornado warning um, or uh, if you might be a Midwestern transplant in New England, whether there's a tornado warning in your hometown. Um, so you can you know, check and see if uh, it's still standing an hour later. Um, or maybe you know you don't want to know that, but um, some of them uh, will have sort of a classification where they've pre-prioritized. Okay, we think that uh, tornado warnings, hurricane warnings, um, you know, some of these most severe weather events, um, uh, terrorism warnings, will get what we call a red priority, and other things will have a yellow priority, green, you know, etc. And you can select which priority groups you want to receive. Um, which seems like a nice at least start at filtering without having to have under check boxes. Um, well, and, and so they should tell you, right, which ones are in which group. Uh, on the other hand, despite having done that, I'm still getting Amber Alerts from Nebraska, um, which I don't really care about. Um, so that's just my I guess, first I guess thought. The, the main question here is whether you want somebody to regulate your notifications or whether it's something you, sh you want to take control of, right, yourself. So um, I can imagine having something like a tor tornado warning notification that could be g regulated by the government or kind of local authorities. But then some of the more personal stuff, especially social notifications from your friends or your or strangers in your friends list, um, you you might want to avoid that, or you might ha have certain preferences about notifications you want to receive. So I guess the combination should be, you know, having personal notifications that you set yourself, but also having some sort of overarching you know, government level, authority level notification system that should be regular, that should be available to anyone. I mean, SMS does have this level of thing built into it, all going all the way up from the Amber Alerts, which local police can broadcast sort of at will and they're learning to use, all the way up to the presidential alert, which as far as I can tell, all modern phones are required to, to not let you disable. The anecdotes I, I've read about it describe it was basically intended for that last minute message saying, it's been nice knowing everybody, the, the nukes are incoming, there's nothing we can do. Um, but it's all built into the SMS system. But that's, but that's for one stream of notification, that's not for managing your personal notifications or notifications for the things you have elected to be informed about. So do, do we need like a layer of notifications? So well, if you don't, yeah, I mean, I, I would actually say anytime someone says, like, do we need a layer above this, it means you don't actually understand the problem. Like, like if you don't understand the problem, add a layer of abstraction, <laughs> it seems like you solved the problem, but you didn't. And so that'll be beware of any time you, you think that that's an approach to take. Um, so I'm, I tried to try to solve a problem by first documenting specific examples. So we talked about the different, like, uh, like tsunami is one example. Tornado warning is another example. And you can think about, well, there's all these 
if I travel to some location, like if I go to Florida and maybe I'm not from the U.S., I don't know that hurricanes are a problem. I don't know to turn on hurricane warnings. Right. So asking users to manage every single p kind of catastrophe is not reasonable. So there needs to be, there does need to be some sort of layering. I will grant you that, um, or at least c grouping, categorizing uh, things like that, where it's like warn me about, uh, you know, weather events, dangerous weather events, or dangerous environment, natural disasters, but that's, perhaps. But that's the, the a government gen a government or some other authority generated advisory stream of important notifications that's much less bothersome to me than having my watch buzz every six seconds because someone I know checked in on Swarm in another city. Back in the bad old days when we all used, good old days, when we used to check our email in 80 by 24 text windows, we had tools for dealing with our notification stream. Procmail is Turing complete, not necessarily the best interface, but it was a tool for handling exactly this kind of thing. You write rules for what you want to deal with, and it and it it evaluates the things, the messages that come in, and does what you tell it to. And it's just that nobody's really building those kinds of tools for social mobile notifications. Well. One, w one thing that came to my mind when, when you said this is that um, notifications, in fact, are great habit-building uh, affordances. So every time, habit-building affordances. So if, you, if, if an app wants you to use that app more often, a notification is a great external stimuli that will bring you back to the app and get you into a certain... Um, it, it will make you re repeat a certain action with a certain frequency so that it, it forms a habit. Right, so um, it's it's a great it's a great design tool. If it's done correctly, mm -hmm. it, yes. But most people doing it don't. It's really easy to overdo, do it wrong. Yeah, yeah there's two ways. One is, hey, is all these people. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, there's two ways you can get those notifications. One is on Instagram. Hey, this person liked your photo. This person commented. This person sent you a Facebook message. But then there's the other. You've waited 24 hours, and now you have 10 credits that you can use on Farmville, right? Which is a uh, hey, you need to go back and, and, and then start another process so it'll start this process to get you some more points for addictive gaming. Um, the question is, how can you get an alert without having to have that message? Like, without having to get a push notification? Is there, is there a different way that you can get an alert? I mean, there's the badge on apps, right, that, like, show you how many messages you haven't read, which can cause quite a bit of anxiety, actually. Um, so... Like, do you really need all, like, for instance, I got locked out of my work email account, and I had been checking that all the time compulsively, and now I can't check it, and I called up service desk, and they won't, they weren't even there. <laughs> so, I just don't, I, you know, it's been very relaxing, right? Where I would like maybe a push notification that says, check your email now, and this is the only time you can check it, or something like that. But if something really crazy comes through, then somebody can elevate it and say, you really need this message. Which is why I tell people, send me a text message if I really need to answer this email. Because I don't want to check it otherwise. Maybe just like a follow-up. So would you kind of posit that we need certain degrees of notifications? So some notifications that are have just a natural, uh, just a stronger, ma a bigger magnitude or more urgency attached to them? The issue is that that already is there with email, right? There's the urgent message. And people have, people who send messages that aren't necessarily urgent start to abuse it if they can have it, right? So if I tell somebody, hey, um, here's my personal phone number that's opted in that they're close enough to me that they'll be able to tell me about some emergency that needs to happen. And that I, I as a human know that group and a machine can't tell that for me. And then I might get the right message that way. Like right now I'm doing an experiment. I'm not checking my work mail for a week and seeing if something's urgent enough, if people can route around and find a communication channel to reach me at, then, right? I think part of the disconnect that I was hearing is that urgent and important that's decided by the recipient, not the sender. 
Ooh, nice. Um, at least in most cases for personal stuff, in a business context, it could be different. I think it's also tied to uh, rising etiquette of how to communicate with each other as there are multiple or an increasing number of ways of communicating. So, for example, I open up Skype and my mom calls me immediately and is like, oh, I saw you were online. <laughs> yes, I'm always online. It doesn't mean you need to call me. She hasn't quite understood um, how... Yeah, hi, Mom. Uh, she hasn't quite understood how that interface works. And I think it's a... When people use it in the, in the wrong way, you realize that there is an etiquette and a known way of communicating. And so, as a sender, unless I'm a spam bot I, or, you know, or a company or whatever it is, I wouldn't want to tell you this is an urgent mes message unless I personally thought you really had to see it. And right, there's that idea of if I'm online, I'm automatically available, yeah. when in reality I might not be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and people do abuse that quite a bit. Like if, but that way I put that I'm available on Gchat and then people like show up and it's okay, cool. But in a way I am available when I do that and I only set that when I'm actually available to talk. But there's not one uniform way of doing it either, right? Because I, I, I default to invisible. Yeah. Right, whereas the, the sort of the email default is, like imagine we took that ball of string at the entrance that we have there, and we all uh, tied like a little bit of string um, uh, around our pinkies, and then like put that string into the middle. Uh, any one of us could reach in the middle and be like, and like pull on the string that's like hooked, hooked to anyone else. That's kind of what email does. It sort of allows anyone to like reach out and like pull the string that's like holding onto your finger and be like, hey, pay attention to this. Um, uh, yeah, and that's, but I, I want to try to uh, separate like the communication person to person notification problem because that's, that's like a whole other discussion from the uh, notification problem w w that comes from like devices and computers as the extension of self. Like from an actual like cyborg perspective, when the way that we use these things as uh, like uh, just enhancements of our eyes, enhancements of our, of our hands, and, and just as like machines, right? So um, like sending agents out there to do things for you, a lot of apps sort of act that way and then tell you when they're done or tell you when things are happening on your behalf. Uh, even those seem overwhelming. So maybe we can come up with examples of technologies that aren't obnoxious when they give us notifications. Other than the super emergency ones, what are low level ones that don't bug you when they give you a notification? This is not an answer, this is a, a separate thread, but the kind of notifications that I miss and that I would love to have are ways to notify a sender that the communication is going to be shared with more than just the sender and the recipient. So I really like having intermediaries for, for communication and I like publishing communications with me. And uh, to be polite to the sender, it's usually nice to get some kind of consent or to make sure that they know. And there isn't, there isn't an obvious easy way to do that. And so sometimes if, I'm, if, I, if I feel that the sender was uh, abusing their right to get in touch, I don't worry too much about doing that. But I would still love to have an even more polite way. Um, one thing that comes to my mind as a technology that um, is super non-obnoxious and... Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, uh, one example that comes to my mind of a notification technology that is super non-obnoxious, even though it notifies me of all sorts of things I don't care about, um, is the uh, the macOS notifications, where it'll sort of float a little rectangle in a corner of the screen in the periphery for a few seconds, um, and then it goes away on its own. And if I want to go looking for it, there's a couple of things I can click through to go find that notification. And otherwise, if I don't care to take any action, it dismisses itself. And I think that is lovely. And it drives me up the wall because it breaks me out of flow. It's this thing that is not important to me at this second is now in my field of view flashing at me. And that's a you versus me thing. And I've been tuning it down and further and further, but it's just, it's one of those things that 
I'm glad it works for some people, because otherwise it would be really <laughs> awful. One thing I think that works well is Twitter uh, for me, because it sits there until I go and I find it. And it, it, I don't have to engage with it, and there's no expectation that I will actually necessarily engage with it. There's, so there's very low feedback responses, but if I want it, it's there. It's in a summarized, easy to scroll through form sort of thing. I, I actually find the opposite with Twitter because, uh, I mean, maybe this is partly a, a username issue. I, I have at T, and so my notifications on Twitter are pretty useless. People are using it to mean all kinds of different things. But Twitter also has a whole settings page for uh, email notifications with 22 different checkboxes of, do you want to receive emails about this, this, this? There are 22 of those, literally. And that, that's ridiculous to expect people to manage and or tune based on time of day or availability or anything like that. Um, it's funny, my Twitter email notifications are just set to off. But, um, uh, but I... I I thought it was interesting, Beth, what you were saying about how there's no expectation that you'll engage with it, because those expectations are so socially created. So there was a time, I think, when there was no particular expectation that a person would necessarily answer their phone when you called, because they might not be available. Um, uh, whereas I think we at least went through a phase with cell phones where people would answer them in basically all times and all places. And so now it creates a much higher degree of anxiety when somebody doesn't answer a call. Um, and there's a greater perception of an obligation to respond immediately that has been created through this sort of pocket notification culture between cell phones and text messages. And so um, I think one of the things I'm hearing is uh, you don't feel any particular social obligation to engage with Twitter, nor do I, but uh, maybe Tantech does um, just because of differences in how we have engaged with the medium previously in our lives and the expectations we might have created there. Um, and it's... I find it to be sort of this floating problem of any time I engage more with a particular medium, I unintentionally create more of an expectation that I will be available by that medium when other people want me there as opposed to when I want to be there. I guess this is more of just like a an observation, but I think it's really interesting that the number of options one has kind of like decreases the likelihood that your understanding of the etiquette around that service is like, wait, did I say decrease? Anyway, your understanding of the etiquette becomes much different than like someone else's. So like if, if you DM me, I have a notification set up that will like show on my phone and Twitter is a thing that I'm engaged with really actively. And so that's actually a pretty good way to get a hold of me. A lot of other people are like, wait, you DM, like, that's a thing that you do? Like, why did you DM me? Like, there's no way I'll ever see that. And I was like, wait, really? Because that's, like, a perfect way to get a hold of me. And, like, that's just because I have created a set of rules that, like, create my own little Twitter world. And I forget that, like, my Twitter world is not your Twitter world. I mean, I remember probably at this point 10 years ago, my dot .plan file listed all the ways to get in touch with me in order of preference. Aaron, I think, has something like that on his website now, listing off all the contact methods and which ones work the best. But it's something I'd love to, if that were just in software. Oh. <clears throat> you, I, I think that's a, great, uh, that's a great argument for having some kind of uh, a site that people use as the way to get in touch with them that translates Right. The, the, actual, the actual mechanism that sends a message or a notification to you in a way that you'll see in the next six hours is going to be different. You might change it between now and this time next year. I shouldn't need to know how you're changing the tools you use. Well, one thing I just want to say in response to what you said before is that every time you create a new account, you're creating a sense of self on that site, right? You create, a, you create a self that kind of exists independently from kind of your offline life, right? And this self can interact with others through these different channels, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm not uh, sure I agree with your premise, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> 
and, and then you, what, you, what you typically find is that um, your preferences of being contacted through these different channels, through these different kind of selves on these different sites, varies with the people you, you want to interact with. So say you have um, a preference to keep in touch with your mom through Skype, right? And keep in touch with your friends through Facebook and through your indie developer community through another site, right? I mean, there, there can be different contexts and different contexts afford different channels of communication. So in that regard, notifications will be necessarily context-driven. And it is really difficult to find one unique way to manage all these different notifications. Uh, I guess I'm weird, because I'd rather just have a unified client so that I don't have to think about what transport substrate I'm using to talk to someone. I talk to my wife through Slack, Twitter, SMS, email. I think that's probably it for a day-to-day -day basis. No, 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 no. So she's an example. She's an example of sort of a, the, the standard in my in, in my. Here, I have a question for you quickly. Uh, I was wondering. So we're still talking about person-to-person -person communication in some way, and I was just wondering what your, oh, yes, uh, and I was wondering what, what examples you might have of more cyborg type notification to self uh, things we might find or yeah what you what you were referencing because twitter notifications or instagram notifications they're all still somebody else there's a reaction to something out there rather than a self um enhancement of self so that's a great question because i was going to ask the same thing but of everyone else so i'll, I'll um i started with the weather slash disaster example mm -hmm. where you're kind of using these uh weather sensory services like i don't identify with that as a friend or like, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's just a service. It's just a sensor. Mm -hmm. um, you could say the same thing for uh, traffic sensors. Mm -hmm. So if I am, uh, or, or like civil unrest, like that should be another sensor. Like if I'm walking in a city, I would like to get an alert if there is a protest a block away. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm walking towards a protest or some other so sort of action, I should, you know, walk around it. Um, in, in general, there's sort of like the physical space, physical hazards category of alerts like that. Uh, then there are the alerts uh, that you'd like to receive about all the different little pieces of yourself you tend to, uh, like your web server. So if my web server goes down, I would like to get an alert at some priority level that, oh, I need to go fix that, right? Um, uh, let's see, other, other indicators. If there's something happening around my house and I'm not home, that's another sort of physical, not not directly to, to me, but to, to something that's mine, uh, alert indicator. Um, so I guess that's, or you can also set up filters. So I want to know if someone mentions um, uh, like Indie Web Camp, the, the days or the week before Indie Web Camp actually occurs at, at a higher level of urgency than say normally or right after, or like, you know, between them and when it's, when it's not as uh, interesting. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear other examples from other people of what kind of notifications do you want or don't want uh, that don't have to do with communication with another person. I really want my notification settings to be editable by my friends, and maybe there's a fall off, like the people who are closest get to edit them more. But often the things that I am interested in are not things that I'm able to name, especially these kinds of environmental changes. I mean, for instance, I'm not home. It happens that now there's a tornado season. I'm away for a month. Uh, anyone who lives near me should be able to add that kind of notification somehow to the priority thing for me that would then get passed through whatever the best channels are to send me a priority a regional note. Um, since this is a cyborg conference, I think that like health, Health-related notifications would be really nice if you had some type of... I mean, especially, I think people who have diabetes essentially have this already. You can have that little port that is connected to a beeper-type device, like, on your belt loop, and it shows you stuff. But um, you can kind of imagine a world in which, like, other things, like your vitamin levels would kind of trigger an alert, or some other, like 
chemical balances in your body, hormones, stuff like that. Um, I think that could be like a really cool future thing. I would like to be able to be subscribe to other people's emotional states <laughs> um, or if they haven't eaten in five hours so I can help get them food or if they have diabetes if I can help them with the sugar levels, right? Like if my dad has too much cholesterol or if he's eaten too many hamburgers, I want to, you know, because there are situations in which you might get an alert about yourself but you can't help yourself at all but somebody else can help you, right? So like... I can see that going really awry. Um, just thinking about Clue, the app Clue. If you're a lady, maybe you know what this is. It's like a period tracking app. And imagine if like your boss or your boyfriend or whoever could subscribe to like when you were ostensibly like PMSing and then every angry thing that you said during that time is like oh well I got this notice that like it's Heather's special time of year so let's ignore all of her concerns Not something that you need an app for I mean as in other people can tell so this is a, po it's a possible thing it's a possible oh, thing I, uh, I'm just <laughs> as, as whatever, what Heather is saying is actually really important because um, it, it does establish a certain degree of social surveillance right um, if you make the data available even if it's just a close a circle of really close friends still they know about it and you know that they know so that automatically changes the way you behave or the kind of data you would like to release to that circle of friends right um, oh yeah i did i had a um I had a, a, an alert that I would, I think is really, well, I think would be really uh, beneficial for everyone to have, and that is an alert that tracks our energy usage and consumption. Uh, so as when you're driving around aimlessly, uh, your car would have a built-in system that says, hey, you've used a lot of gas. You know what, like, that impact has, you know, around the world, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Or if you leave the lights on, you say, oh, you know, you burn, like, X amount of coal by leaving your lights on. Um, and so it's, in a sense, it's like a health app, but for society and makes people conscientious of that. So one thing I've done is play World of Warcraft and a bunch of the, it, it involves, so that it has the ability to add configurable alerts, of absolutely anything that happens in game basically. And it does involve a lot of effort. And so I think it's that, how do you, how do you reduce the amount of effort? And anyone who's worked with automatic alert systems for actual systems and operations, there's a lot of effort involved in trying to make those important and useful. And um, I don't think we have the tools yet besides sort of social crowdsourcing things like Twitter retweets for um, ways, so we haven't figured out the automated version of is this important or not. I'm just going to put in a quick comment about a thing that drives me batty, which is there are a lot of times when I would like absolutely no notifications at all, except of things that are life-threatening, right? Uh, is there a tornado, a hurricane, whatever. Um, and um, I would really like those things that are life-threatening to override the silent setting on my phone. Um, I'm not entirely clear on why they don't, right? So um, if I'm... Uh, one of the places I often am, sitting in a courtroom where everybody has their phone on silent uh, and it's a windowless courtroom and there's a tornado coming for the courthouse. I think we all want our phones to go off and make a noise, yes, including the judge's phone. Um, and um, I have games that can disregard my hardware silent switch. I don't understand why my emergency notification app doesn't. <laughs> so just a follow-up from the life-threatening, um, a lot of uh, people a lot of medical forms have the notion of an emergency contact. Um, wh what about that notification? So this isn't necessarily a social thing per se, because the person who the emergency is about is probably not the one contacting you. It's probably their doctor or some other uh, institution contacting you because the, your number showed up in a form or your contact information showed up in a form. Should that notification also break the silence on your silent device, on your mobile device? What's that? Vibrate? Yeah. As soon as anything can, spam is Right. But if you, but you can make that an option for people who are on their phones, the people who care to run through the emergency notification options. Right. We should probably break. Is it, uh, is it time to switch to the next session? Okay. Well, 
Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we took a lot of notes in the Etherpad. Feel free to, to brain, dump, brain dump more. I'm hoping this will end up on a wiki somewhere. All the notes on. Is this all going into like a, a product in the end, or is it a product? Yeah. I mean, mm. it sounds like we are about Hopefully to design a new uh, it, it, it probably will go into um, some guidelines on how you might make products. That way, if it goes into a product, then it's just one product. But if it goes into some guidelines, then many people making, then it can affect multiple products. Yeah. And then hopefully it doesn't go We're into. We're gather use cases. Right. Really. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, it gets yeah. brittle. Um, I, I know we're wrapping up. I do want to say one thing in response to Tantec's last comment, which is, I don't know if I want that emergency contact contacting me to break my silent setting, but it would be nice if there were some kind of flag that this phone call coming in from a number I don't recognize is somebody's uh, you know important emergency contact. Uh, on the other hand, as Beth said, as soon as it's possible to do something like that, spammers will. Um, and uh, this, you know... Right. But, but, but I mean, you can imagine that, like, if there is some way for them to, to like dial it, like, my number is this extension, you know, seven five three or whatever, and that extension, like, they would dial it, but on your phone, it would be like, it would be the code to say, oh, this your phone, this is when your phone number has been given out as an emergency contact. Right. This is like the, uh, you know, the the like the, like the, the Gmail Plus this, thing. Yeah. This is my right. Google, the Google Voice number for my emergency. Number.